Hi. There was some sort of error, so sorry you guys are probably in a different spot. <laughs> I know the setup looks different today too. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit. Um, I got some weird error that said I was streaming, but that I wasn't streaming, so I couldn't figure it out. So said my, I was streaming, but I had no internet. Go figure. <laughs> so, um, hey, late night, how's it going? How's everything look and sound? Everything look okay? I moved my setup. My microphone looks like it's kind of far away. So just tell me. I can move it closer. This machine's a little noisier. So I thought you guys would really like to see the binding machine from the front as best as I could. Hi, Lisa. How's it going? You guys hanging in there? Um, actually, I was uh, winding up a bobbin here. Let me just get that going. I may have to change thread. Sounds good? Okay, great. Hey, Sydney. I saw all those masks you made. Good job. Oh, shoot. It's so tight right here. Let me see if I can. Of course, the uh, thread came out of the thread cradle. It's like my least favorite thing to thread. I'd rather thread a, thre a needle than the thread cradle. There we go. So what are you guys up to? Your clock's changed, Louise, finally. <laughs> yeah, Sydney, no, I got that error too. It said I was streaming, but that there was no internet. Go figure. That's why I'm still setting up now because I was trying to troubleshoot that. Yeah, so I, I was like, I don't know, it was really weird. Okay, wait, I gotta move this cord. There's oil on the ground. That's not good. <laughs> All right, so um, masks forever. <laughs> Is that how it's feeling? <laughs> So, um, hey, Megan, how's it going? So I haven't had the call to give masks to anybody. Like I keep seeing people saying they're getting asked for them, but I haven't found anybody. Hi, Claire. Nice to see you too. Thank you. You take care too. <laughs> yeah, she kept, she kept coming an hour late to the stream because of the time, because their ch clocks change at a different time of year. Um, and then, um, and so I just kind of sat on my pile, the small pile I had made with you guys and all the ones that I had cut until I knew I could use them. Cause I also was like, well, maybe someone will need them. And if they're sewn, not the way they need them, then I would have wasted time. So I kind of waited. So, um, someone from my local farmer's market, someone I buy chicken and pork from contacted me and asked if I knew of anybody to make masks for them. So I was like, hey, I already have like 30 cut out. So I figured it was a really great opportunity to divert all of our attention on the fun nature of the binding attachment on this machine. <laughs> it is a really great distraction. It took me like a half hour to set up and all I really had to do was get it from way over there to way over here because it's a beast to, to move and then um, put the oil back in the pan and run it and it was working fine, of course. I, I had it tuned up right before I mothballed it, so. They're, oh, they are, Sarah? That's good, That's, I mean, like, I'm glad that people can probably fill that need now. Hi, Sydney's daughter. Hi. <laughs> are you sewing too? <laughs> um, all right, so the way I set this up, so these are the two bindings I never, finished selling off. I had these two huge um, wheels and then you can see this is what this one looks like. Camera's in such a weird spot. And then this one, this one's a cotton and steel. It's got the little plus signs on it. This went with that crazy awesome bird print that I showed you how to roll up. So I have these two, um, and I know that we all want the masks to be really cute. And I had already cut out all those other fabrics and they're, they're fine, they're cute. Um, but I'm using binding that I have because I have these two as a resource and I have this one here 
which let's see if I can show you is it's a silver um, it's also a cotton steel older cotton steel before before the fiasco <laughs> of cotton and steel um, and now um, they're all in different spots well they're all together but in a different place now as Ruby star so which is awesome I'm so glad they're still together making fabric all right, so um, this machine might be a little bit noisier. It is, this is exactly what my original Juki looked like right when I started the um, stream, if you look way back before I got my new machine. And um, the new machine I have now is just the 2019 version of this. So this is a 5550 Juki. It's probably a little younger than me, um, but not by much, um, but it's still an amazing machine. This one, the only thing I've done to it is put this binding attachment on here, which was $35. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this, so I'm just going to say it up front so I can say watch the video. Um, it's, they're not hard to find. You just need to Google it. Um, I got mine from the people I bought this machine from and they shipped it. Um, you can have them made for a couple thousand dollars, but I swear to you that this one is awesome. I don't know anything about it except that it was $35 <laughs> and I used the Google. <laughs> so um, I think the hardest thing is getting it set up properly um, and mine came installed on the machine. So what I had done was bought two of these machines by mail order uh, from like Texas and I said I want one with the binding attachment. This is the, the width I want the binding. And then it came on here and it was all set up and ready to go. But I still couldn't get the hang of using it very well. And it was about the time I hired Rayanne, my assistant. And it was um, kind of that push that I needed to kind of figure it out. It just wasn't really working great with my hand cut binding, no matter how precise I sewed it. So when I finally had a mechanic come and do a tune-up on my other machines, I had him get this going and it was like no problem for him at all. And it's worked like a charm ever since and that was probably seven years ago. So, oh, awesome, Megan. Teak Shoes doing something as well. So they are giving a $50 gift for proof to me. Oh, wow. That's really nice, Sarah. That's really cool. Um, so I will say I'm not a machine expert. I'm just an expert at using my machine. I'll just put it like that, right? So um, what I can tell you if you're trying to get one of these going is having the binding cut professionally makes a massive difference. Once you get the hang of using your binding attachment, you can use hand cut binding. We did it all the time very successfully. It doesn't go over the seams of the binding as well, but it will go over it. It just looks a little messy and you may need to like time your seams um, in between what you're binding. You'll probably see me do that today a little bit. Um, I'm actually not going to be worried about shelf quality sewing today. I'm going to be worried about getting things done in a timely fashion and so I can hand them off to the farmer tomorrow. So that's my plan. So you can see like this one right here I was my test and what I did was I so first off what I did was I took um, the pattern from the turban project the one I had already used in the previous stream I sewed the top and the bottom seam just this long seam right here turned it I actually interfaced these just as an extra layer so they also have more body and they'll stay a little stiffer and then um, I did a test I ran one of the edges through the machine without pre pleating it and it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> it was awful. Um, and I knew that, but I just wanted to see what would happen because I really like understanding what's the machine's limitations because the machine has limitations. So, um, and I'll tell you all about what this binding machine can't do as far as like project wise. So don't get excited about buying one of these for binding quilts yet, okay? Because I'm gonna tell you <laughs> why it won't work for that very well. Um, so what I ended up doing after this test was I went back and I pre, I missed this one. I ended up pre-sewing all the tucks and I did two rows. Oh, I actually did sew the tucks, but only with one row. Maybe I didn't. 
No, I didn't pre-tuck this one right here. And I realized, oh yeah, that was a fiasco. I had to go back and pre-tuck them. And then I ended up going again and doing two rows of stitches. They're really, really, really close together. That's pretty narrow. But what I'm trying to get is these folds to be perpendicular to this edge here so that they will go through the machine without like folding back on itself, you know, and doing things like that. Because if you have these folds not perpendicular to this raw edge here, what will happen is it, if it crumples back on itself, it'll also pull the um, corner in out of the seam allowance and you'll see it and it, and it does look kind of bad. So I had to pull this one apart and you can see when you have to go back over it, like this one I didn't even get very good, you have to go back to your regular machine, your straight stitch and touch it up. I can't just put this back under this machine and touch it up. It goes into the pile of touch-ups, basically. So, does it, Sarah? <laughs> Which one? Oh, this one? Do you have a bag for me in this fabric? I have to say, I love this fabric. This was my last piece of this fabric, and I made four masks from it. Because I wanted things that weren't overtly feminine or... Um, flowery or anything like that. I wanted some that were just a little bit more plain. Um, this fabric is, we called it grid in chick, at Chicken Boots and it was designed by, um, what's her name? Um, and then I get it, I get her stuff, I, God, it's on the tip of my tongue. I get her stuff confused with um, Amy Butler husband's Parsons, his fabric Parsons. Um, I really liked his stuff too. So, yeah, that's awesome, Sarah. I love this fabric. And it has the green with the polka dot lining. I love that fabric. Okay. All right. So, let's just sew a little bit. So, one of the things I'm going to have to figure out. Oh, and just in case you haven't seen the first video I did, I did give you options on, like, say you don't want to bind your whole freaking mask, right? This one, we just pleated the edge. And then I put a little binding loop as if it was elastic. And on this edge, I put a piece of binding. That way, you only need, you know much less binding. You, you don't need two pieces of binding from each corner, one from each corner. You just need one long one. This way, and it, you know, and it slides, right? So this was, I just gave options in the first video if you're limited on resources, especially elastic. See, so this binding popped off. That goes in the touch-up pile. Where's the touch-up pile? We'll put it up there. Uh, then I did the, the traditional elastic. This one's fine. This one needs a piece of this binding right here, so I still need to finish that one. Um, that one. There's a kids and an adult size. I really don't know if people really need the kid one. Um, and then this one was our trial also in the video. So this is what I'm going by, basically. And uh, the tedious part today is the fact that I'm gonna have to run the machine for that long before I even get to the mask and then that long again. So <laughs> that is kind of the, the rub by doing this, but hey, it's all done in one, right? If I'm careful. Um, the other thing is my pleats are not gonna be even from left to right and I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> so please <laughs> don't tell me how bad I am. <laughs> okay, so I have a, bo a bin full of them right here. All different fabrics, some of the ones you already saw. Um, and different sizes, two sizes. So, so let's see. I think the first thing I'm going to do is mark how long I want this tie to be, and I'm going to kind of mark it on my machine here. And so, basically, if I can get that tie almost to the post of my machine over there, or you know, it's going to be coming off the back like this. I just need a little bit of a um, mark. I know I have tape somewhere. Where's that tape at? Maybe I'll just take a, oh, I don't have the tape right here. Hmm. Ha. If I can make a change to everyone wearing masks, we'll put kids with be Yeah. I feel, you know, honestly, I kind of just left them in the pile because I figured that some of these farmers probably do have to bring their kids to the farmer's market with them. Um, and also maybe their kid wants to look like their mom or dad. So I thought that, you know, that's always like a really great 
saying, right? Looking like your mom or dad when you're a certain age. You don't think so, Megan? I feel like everybody's different. Let's see. I mean, I have this much back there. If it gets too hard to tie, it's kind of a pain. And people can cut the ties off if they want. And um, I don't have a small head, but I don't have a big head, you know. Look at that one needs touch up. This one I did by hand, so. Touch up pile. These don't go in the touch up pile. Uh, this one needs finishing with that other binding as well. Okay, so let's just uh, get this one going and try it out. I don't have my double stitching on this yet. All right, so this machine is really great when you're going on to and off of your project. In other words, you're not doing continuous circle or square, whatever you're thinking, like a quilt, right, is a continuous thing. Because when you go on to the project, there's not a finished edge where the binding's like turned under and clean finished. Yeah, they can shorten them, Megan. I think it's, I think it'll be fine. Maybe I'll go a little bit shorter. I'll move my tape a little bit. Make it like two inches shorter. Okay. So I'm just gonna run my machine like this. And now I know I can put my mask in there. I'm gonna try and get all my little threads in there. I usually have to um, help it along. Especially the mask is probably gonna need that a little bit. I can still lift up my presser foot. And this does have the automatic um, back tack and thread clip, but I'm pretty sure I stole the blade for another machine. So it probably doesn't have the back tack the, or the thread clip, which is, which is totally fine on something like this because you don't really need, um, I will tell you, if you're looking at buying machines and you're like, oh, I would really like two industrial machines, one set up with a binding attachment and one set up um, as a regular machine, you can buy one of these machines for like $500 and then put your binding attachment on there and leave it set up that way. You do not need the auto thread clip for this feature because it has binding in it. You're gonna have to cut the binding out. So it doesn't really need the thread clip if this is all you're gonna use it for. Now I can really go fast, but I don't know how loud this is for you guys. So tell me about the sound. even up these straps before I hand them off and do a little bit of quality control. So there's a seam it's coming to and I'll probably have to pull it through a little bit. Come on. Or a lot. I'm kind of surprised. Now this is when I'll probably have to cut and and kind of like get it past like that. Okay. There we go. So that's kind of a big bump there. And so I can just kind of get it back going like this above and below that little spot right there. And then I can go back and tidy that up. So having a binding machine isn't like a hundred percent guarantee you're going to get exactly perfect binding every time. You do have to work with it. Oh my gosh, Sarah, that's awesome. That's so great. I've been telling people that. I'm like, you know, ask a friend if they have this stuff because um, they may have bought it to fix a little project and they still have a package of it sitting around, you know?
kind of want to, I just want to see my oil thing for a second when I'm going. I don't know if you can see that, but see it'll, when it gets going, you know, it kind of puts up a little bit of a fuss. And if you saw my little video on Instagram, you'll see that when I'm not um, pulling on it, it will uh, gather up the fabric. I think you've heard me, oh, there's a seam right here. There's just no way I'm getting past that. There we go. Um, you've heard me talk about that. Like um, if you bought the project bag pattern and you made the, the pattern and you're like, why does this pocket or the document pocket kind of flop open? Well, the reason is mainly because it doesn't have any elastic at the top, but it didn't need it. The binding machine provided that, it draws it up, you know. Oh, I bet, Megan, yeah. <laughs> wow, Sarah, you really got through it. That's awesome. So if you're using hand-cut binding, you almost always have to um, hand do, like sew on your regular machine, the spot where the, the binding is. The seam is, sorry. Oh, there's a seam right here. I'm being really careful when I pull. I will tell you guys, straight up, complete transparency. I sewed myself on this machine, the worst I've ever sewn myself, and it was because I was pulling the binding through and um, I don't even remember how it happened it was so fast but um, it's because I was using fabric that we had printed by Spoonflower it's nothing they did wrong at all but that fabric it was the poplin and um, it was the knit print on the poplin and because there's so much ink on the surface of that fabric um, it doesn't, there's something about that fabric with the ink on it um, that the machine doesn't grab it as well. And the poplin is super tightly woven too. So um, I love sewing without pop, that poplin. It's one of my favorite fabrics to sew with. It stays almost 100% accurate from cutting to sewing to the, to the end um, because it's nice and tightly woven. And it, it's just really great. I really love it. Um, but we cut it into binding, which is an extremely expensive <laughs> use of the fabric. Uh, but it was a really special project that we were doing. And when I was binding something, I had a pretty bad experience with it. So be really careful. You get the hang of it. I know, Megan, sorry. I just feel like I got to say that, you know, like there's, you know, you got to be respect the machine. This little fold wants to go above the presser foot. So this also has a modified presser foot because of the binding attachment. So one half of it has the little foot here and this side doesn't, it's all one. And the throat plate is different as well. Um, I know the, <clears throat> the attachment's only 35 because when we hired a factory to sew things for us, they looked everywhere, they said, for the attachment, and they kept only telling me about this one they wanted to have made in Thailand for $2,000. Or no, they wanted to have it made in Thailand for like 100, but they said Tennessee attachment would make one for a couple grand. And I was like, wait, I just Googled that, so. Hi, PA. Um, I didn't say what length I'm using. I'll measure it though, just a second. I kind of have it marked over here. You can't really see on the machine. And then I stop. So the, the one tie is about 18 inches and that's probably a little long. See you, Sydney. And so see, uh, some of my stitching is showing here where I tacked it. I may go back and remove that. You can see that those two rows weren't as close as they could have been. The binding is very narrow and because of the thickness of the fabric, it will take up a lot of that space of the binding no matter how close you get. Like I said, there's kind of a learning curve with using it. Let's see, how many do we have left and how many do we want in this silver binding? Let's see, let's do a couple kitties. 
and a couple waves, and then we'll switch. And maybe a couple foxes. Maybe just one fox. This fabric is so, um, it shows every like lint. And I thought maybe it's the fabric, but it's probably because it's dark. <laughs> All right, so let me get my tail going. You can really go through bobbins with this too, just because it, it's going so fast, so much faster. Oh, this is another one where my tacking is going to show. The trick when you're pulling things through is to remember that you don't want to pull on the needle, you know? It's like anything, especially like your serger, right? If you're pulling things through your serger, you need to really take it carefully because you don't want to pull on your needle. The needle will bend and then it'll hit underneath and break. Um, you could hurt your machine and yourself. I sound like a teacher, but it, it's really true and I've experienced all of it. <laughs> So, even if you're careful, it happens. When I hurt myself on this machine, Ran wasn't here, I was alone, and um, I almost passed out. <laughs> hey, Mary Ells. Waterproof fabric, how can they breathe through that? I know a lot about waterproof fabric. Yeah, use quilting cotton or poplin, tightly woven. They need to be able to wash it and sterilize it. Yeah, so some of, yeah, just two layers. Um, I ended up interfacing some of these just as another layer. The machine really likes, oh, did I get it on the seam? Wow, I made it, I made it. This is great. I'm actually trying to sell this machine, so um, it's nice to be able to have it like up and running for someone. Yeah, be careful about waterproof fabric. I just ran out of bobbin. I heard something different. It likes it when I start with the pleats um, on the top going down. It The pleats are still going up on the back, though. I just think the um, machine likes it this way better. And I ended up not top stitching along this edge, uh, pr pretty much actually from my waterproof fabric days. Anytime you perforate fabric, you're just adding another hole. And I know it's only quilting cotton, but there's my bobbin. I ran out. All right, so. It's kind of a nice way to pre-fold your fabric too, you know? All right, so now we need to change our bobbin. I have three cream bobbins here. I'm stealing from my other machine. <laughs> right, Mary Alice, I know. Yeah, I, I never finished the ones I made with these the other day because I just was like, I don't see any real uh, call for them. Yeah, but they need to be able to wash them. Like I told this gal, I was like, you know, you guys need to wash these when I hand them off to you, you know? Some home machines have these kinds of attachments, but I've never used one. I'm curious how good they are. Uh, my serger has one for a cover stitch binding, but I've never used it either. In my opinion, you have to be doing a lot of it in order to warrant using it. I would have never done this for one project. The way I valued production things um, was not only if it was cheaper, uh, sometimes it was basically time. And I have a few good examples about that. Like when I ended up getting um, woven labels, like the labels that you see that said, you know, Chicken Boots USA on them, I used to hand make those in my printer. <laughs> and 
they worked great. I mean, they were definitely crafty and a little homemade looking, but they were still, and I made them really well. Like they're, they're indestructible. They um, were cheaper than buying woven labels, but the thing is it took me time to make those. And even though my, if I took my time and the cost of materials, um, I, it was still cheaper for me to make them, but I just didn't have the time to devote to doing it, you know? <laughs> yeah, Mary Alice, I know. That's the thing is, like, I think that um, folks don't, they're really trying to be helpful, but they sometimes don't realize what they're saying because uh, they don't understand all the stuff. I've definitely seen that. And the thing is, I'm not an expert, so I don't want to say that's not true. <laughs> you know? I'm trying to get all these little thread thingies in there. I use the rotary knife to trim up these edges really quick before the stream. I'll tell you, the most important tool with this machine, hilariously, why do I keep not noticing there's going to be a seam right there? Dang it. I'm not even going to try. There we go. Uh, my most important tool with this machine is the broken seam ripper. <laughs> this broke, not because of this machine. <laughs> it's really funny. We don't even use these kinds of seam rippers. I've always used these. But I had one of these because um, I had a few spares, you know, and um, <laughs> this one broke. I don't remember how or anything, but we found it really useful to have this little, it's kind of grabby and sharp, this little spot right here. To Because there's a, there's a slot right here in the binding attachment. And that's what you feed the binding, you have to feed the binding through as you get it started. That little, we've never lost that seam ripper. I'm sure if Rayanne was watching right now, she'd actually chuckle seeing it. There's a few things like that, you know? <laughs> You're like, that thing works, don't lose it. <laughs> the awl works fine too, but th this machine did never have an awl sitting next to it, so. It's kind of funny. I keep almost forgetting to do the tie first. I hope I didn't miss any. I can always, you know, uh, back up some stitches and then piece in a, a piece if I have to, you know. You get really good at dealing with this. It saves you a lot of time and then sometimes it costs you a little time. Having it professionally cut was so key to the success of this thing. Yeah, I don't know. I think, um, this is what I think. I think we get too clever about things. And you should just go by what they need. You know, just because a medical professional may not know, understand sewing terms, they also, they understand what they need it to do. And I think learning what it needs to do, what is that? It's like fuzz on there. I keep going. So I think understanding how are you going to use this how will it be treated uh, is kind of the key. It's so weird watching the machine on the camera. The way that looks on the camera, the what it picks up it doing. Like when I watch it, if I go slow, it kind of stays in time. If I go fast, it's almost like it slows down. Crazy, crazy stuff. The interface, interface what, Megan, the t-shirt material? seam it's looking it's looking okay you can see right here that the um, it really dragged right there and it almost rubs the fabric raw see that 
Um, this fabric in particular isn't the easiest because of the metallic print on it. Every little thing you do makes a difference on this thing. Like, it, it impacts it. Our favorite binding was, um, what was that? I can't even think of what it was. Like, I really liked this, the, the Poplin by Spoonflower unprinted. It works really great. Um, the art gallery stuff or any of those lighter weight, those, they're thinner, but they're tighter woven. Those, <clears throat> those would be okay in here, but they would, I would get, um, torquing wrinkles. Hi, Debbie, Debbie Lou, right? Welcome, Debbie Lou Sarah D. <laughs> Thanks for following. Um, they're only, it's only about 30, Sherry. They're going to be going to the farmer's market, folks. They're going to be going to the farmer's market, folks, um, and they understand their limitations. I kind of made sure I was like, you guys know, right? Those, there's limitations. Where's my other spool of thread? Let's see. Let's do some blue. Well, actually, I can leave it on the uh, cream. We can keep doing, um, we can do the purple. Now I got to re-thread the machine, though. Yeah, so uh, for some reason we got a new knife on one of the machines one day and it didn't fit. <laughs> and so uh, the mechanic took the knife from this one. <laughs> it's kind of genius. So, uh, because this, you don't really need the thread clip. All right, so let's switch out the binding. This is how I switch out the binding. I cut it off right here. Um, and then I usually pull it out. I don't run it through. You don't want to sew in there without a bobbin. It's not a serger, and it's really easy to mistake this machine like that. You kind of, you feel like there's always fabric in there, kind of like a serger, and it's, it is kind of a false sense of security. So when we got our binding cut, if you're ever just one of that, that one person that's looking at this video going, finally, someone's talking about a binding machine. Um, if you're getting your binding cut by someone, Tell them not to put it on rolls this big if you're going to use it on this machine. It, it's a little too big. The diameter should be more like that, you know, kind of like a huge grap grapefruit. Uh, because the diameter here is going to bump into the cords behind your machine back here. And so I put this on there, which is from, put, it's like a little yarn ball holder from this stand for knitters. Um, and it never worked for that for me. But this thing is great. And it's just this little piece of wood I put on the spindle back there. And then because it raises it up a tiny bit, it um, kind of makes it clear. Doesn't really clear the cords, but it, it, it does give it a little bit more. And because that thing glides, it glides on there better. Yeah, right, Sherry? Yeah, exactly. All right, so I always cut a diagonal, um, and how's this go? Yeah, so the print goes away from you. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> and then when I thread it, I go like this. I start um, closest to the attachment. I go from underneath, and then I go down, and I go underneath, and then down like that. So it's kind of like, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if I can get you to see it. You see it's these little... This little doohickey here. So I go into this one from a below, and then I go like this, then like this, then like this, then like this when you're threading it. I'm using a tripod today for my camera so you can see the sewing. That took me a long time to figure out, by the way, doing this little thing and then flatten it out. Make sure it's totally flat like that. You don't want any slack back here. So if you can, I, I'm, I'm kind of good at dealing with it. So if there was, I could handle it. And then you put it in your detachment, get your broken seam ripper, <laughs> um, and then kind of feed it in there like this. Lift up the presser foot, pull it through. 
And then I kind of make sure all this is flat like this, even this, and make sure that all of this um, is folding toward you like this, not away. And then push it, push it down in there and it'll get all folded like that. Make sure you have thread in your bobbin before you start sewing. Make sure your needle's threaded too. Take your foot off of the pedal when you're threading your needle. I'm telling you, this machine, it just, it kind of gives you that feeling like it's a serger and it's not. It's still your regular sewing machine. And it's far more powerful than a home serger. And I still have all my fingers and stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, right, Sherry? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we have purple on. Let's see, what do we want? Maybe a kitty. Let's see. I mean, the purple's really just not going to go with much. I'll do that. And then maybe um, just do a few in the purple. Make that a little narrower. This one doesn't look like I got it trimmed. I was so excited that the other day I was looking for something to watch on TV uh, while I was, I'm using my rowing machine again because I'm just kind of like, I need to exercise so much right now. And um, I was so excited that I forgot I hadn't watched The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And it's so, I'm like, oh, this is such a nice treat. Just start that over. See, this one sews way better. You see that? The um, metallic isn't hanging it up. Just in general, this is going to go way better. Look at that. Pick your problem. <laughs> Have a hole in the middle facing the face to put the... It, oh, oh, yeah. And I've also heard of people making slits for removable HEPA filters. Are there any uh, mail carriers in the house? Because I'm kind of curious why I don't see them wearing protective gear. I mean, it's okay, the colors with this. That's a little kid one, I'm pretty sure. This is so much easier than the metallic. What was that? Oh, I just dropped a spool of thread in the garbage. So we would use this machine on things like... Um, Binding the top edge of pockets, uh, vinyl, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You're so disappointed. Why, Glenn? Glenn, we were wondering how the corset, that was you, right, making the corset, how that went. Sounded weird. What's that noise? Oh, I think it's my spool, it's so big. I really can't see under there.
I am watching a little bit of TV lately. I'm watching um, Ozark on Netflix, which I really love that show. Um, and Mrs. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I, I have to say, that show kind of annoys me a little bit, but it's fun eye candy, you know? Nice, Glenn. Congrats. You're waiting on laces. That's really cool. Good job. I'm trying to see what that noise was. There's my seam. We'll get past that and then I'll go. So when we would do like the edge of uh, vinyl, it was really easy. This thing loves binding vinyl. Something nice and stiff like that, that's a single layer. Uh, there's no hang up with the vinyl at all because it's all fabric on fabric contact. There's no um, contact with the vinyl with the machine. It's really great. It works so nice. Do one more in this one. I can tell it gets stuck. Sometimes I just cut that stuff off. Why not, right? It is dark, Mary Alice. No kidding. I'm, you know, um, I have qu I have questions about that show, but my husband is. He's like super, super smart and really good with strategy and stuff like that. And I asked him my question. He was like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, no, I need you to know. I need you to remember. Um, you know? Yeah, I really hope that, that show doesn't get really manipulative and start doing things irrationally. Just to keep us stressed. Yeah, the foxes are cute, aren't they? I love that fabric. The only reason I have some is because I loved it so much that that's pre-washed. Um, I was going to make something for myself out of it. Even though it's a quilting cotton. It's actually not, though. Ooh. Okay, that might be something I need to look at. I'll look at that. Something funky there. This machine could actually probably use a new needle. Let's just do that. I don't know if I have a screw over here though. I don't, or a screwdriver. Let me get grab a screwdriver. Oh, there's a screwdriver right here. Wow. Let's do 16. I still have so many needles. Yeah, that um, fox fabric is by um, Cloud9, and their fabrics aren't quilting cotton. They're a really nice weight poplin. They're actually probably one of our favorite ones to use as binding, but we never, we rarely use the Cloud9 fabrics because um, for so long, so many of them are really juvenile, like directed towards uh, people with, you know, uh, kids companies and stuff. Um, but I really liked, it's all organic cotton and I really liked their, um, stuff, you know. So I always tried. Let me get rid of some of these. Feed her off the pedal. I was thinking about doing some beginning oriented sewing videos. But I'm really worried. I'm not sure what I need to cover. <laughs> you know? There's nothing worse as a beginner loading something like that up and then the person not really understanding what a beginner needs, you know? <laughs> I've got the eye facing a little too far forward. The eye on this machine of the needle, it goes that way. And I can see it. It's just a little trickier. And stay there. Does anyone know if uh, Sew to Fit has been uh, streaming? 
I haven't seen her streaming. I was curious how she's doing. Come on. Come on. There we go. That looks way better. I really like a new needle. Okay, so after all that, we're gonna switch now, right? So let me do some um, of the plus signs here, the green ones. See, so it doesn't clip the thread. You can still see there's tails there, but you have to cut the binding anyway, so you don't really need that feature. So right side away from you, down, over, down, over, angle, thread, push through, flatten, push back, test. All right, so this one needs a long tie. Okay. And this one needs the binding. You have it, Shay? Hmm. I'll bet she's staying busy. I love this plus sign fabric. I don't know if it makes the greatest binding, but it's cute. Oh, really? Hmm. I saw she posted on Instagram, so I asked her how she was doing. But I have her back. She probably logged off right after that. I always do that. I feel like, are you guys on Instagram as much lately? Because I feel like um, a lot of people aren't on it very much right now. I'm not. I don't know why. It's just... Bye, Mary Alice. That's awesome. Have fun. I forgot to tell you guys. Um, so Saturday we sewed another prototype of the bag you guys designed, and um, it went really good. And we troubleshoot a few things, but um, one of the things after that video, I ended up. Let's see, let's get a bunch of these. Um, let's see, what do I have left? I have the blue binding left. Right. Um, I ended up redesigning the pocket. Oh, it's way over there. So the gusset pocket that we've been talking about for like eyeglasses and foam, I think it's just not working very well. It's not working for me. And um, yeah, maybe Sherry. Yeah. But I feel like there's like people aren't on there looking either. Like the engagement is really low. It just seems weird for me. Like some of it, I'm just like. I don't know. Um, there's just something about that pocket that, I don't know, it wasn't really 
coming together very well. And I could tell the flap wasn't drafted correctly for that style pocket. But when I looked at what it would take, we don't want one of those flaps. I, it's just like, it's not the look I don't think you guys are going for. But I did come up with one and I sewed a sample of it yesterday. So I'm gonna have to show you guys. I'm gonna go get it since I'm talking about it right now and I wanna forget. See what you guys think. Ooh, backed in a corner there. To go all the way around. Like as the crow flies, it's like two feet away, but. Where's my new pocket? Oh, here it is. Oof. All right. So um, this was the prototype that we worked on on Saturday. It's got all these placeholder things like just ribbon for a strap and stuff like that. Um, this came out fine. The inside pocket uh, for the EpiPen and the you know other pockets right here. And it's got the water bottle sleeve on the side here so that'll corral your water bottle in there. The laptop sleeve right here is way less um, floppy and bulky, you know? And then we have this flap design that kind of hugs the corners of the bag there like this. A little bit over designed, but we also have a vanilla flap as well with a, a zippered pocket on it. Um, but these pockets right here, we were really fussing with. And I think one of you suggested doing an elastic top and I think that's the way we should go, but we have to change a few other things. So this is my sample right now. So I ended up making an elastic top, but I didn't sew the perimeter of the gusset like it is here, this little squared edge here. And then I think the flap will um, be able to be nice and flat on top now, and you still have a flap. You can still put a closure for your flap, and I'm gonna center the point. So this is my solution. So there'll be two of those right here. One with a flap, one without, but you can put two flaps on if you want. So it'll be more like this kind of thing, you know? So anyway, I think I finished the pattern. I just need to now like do everything digital for you guys and you guys can try it yourself. And then um, maybe we could sew a real one on Saturday in real fabrics test out my final pattern. A wider, wider binding attachment would be a little easier on the thicknesses. Wouldn't be for a tie, but you know. You don't, you don't PA if you don't want Penny, right? It's Penny. Wait, do I do I know that's your name? No, you're not Penny. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, does not look so much better late night. I was kind of thinking the other one didn't look great, partly because of the fabric choices, you know, but it just wasn't sitting well with me. I ended up like Googling pockets and cargo pockets and then I was like, huh, this isn't really a cargo pocket either, you know? Oh, it is Penny? Okay. <laughs> um, it's really easy to sew as well, it's less steps, so that's always a plus, right? Since we've had added so many features to it. But yeah, you don't really need the flap if you don't want. I'm going to go past this uh, seam right here. It's just one of those added security things, or maybe you want the look of it. I'm not a big fan of the way elasticized pockets look. So sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. <laughs> I know, Sarah, right? It's so cool. I agree. It, I, when she messaged me, I was like, well, I have 30 masks 
you know, cut. And then I was like, ooh, it would be so fun to use the binding machine. And we all kind of need that right now, right? Some kind of uh, fun little eye candy thing. Yeah, if you're local to me, I'm selling this machine. I, uh, I'm just gonna sell it with the attachment on it. Unless I don't really want it, but. It's such a great workhorse. I've actually never used this machine for anything but binding too. <laughs> So yeah, it, it is nice to like have this really easy way to do this, but you guys, that pile, I'm have to go over everything and, and touch it up. So yeah, yeah, right, late night? Yeah, exactly. It's like, um, it's like anything, any design. You just gotta be able to let go and move on because maybe the, design is just not the right one for what you're doing, you know, and that's okay. It's why I have that weird bin of weird stuff, <laughs> you know, they're all really weird. Like sometimes I'd be like, I mean, and I, I'm the first to admit that a lot of the designs I did for chicken boots were kind of weird, you know? <laughs> Laura, yeah! <laughs> It really is instant gratification. Yeah, like I, um, I think partly why, like there were a lot of reasons I ended up closing Chicken Boots, right? It was a successful business. It was doing really good. Um, so it was a hard decision. But, you know, there were certain things I, that I just can, you know, like as far as like what was going on around me, that I couldn't really control, right? I'm gonna switch to the blue. Let's make sure we don't, we're okay with the blue being on all of these. I mean, I'm not really that okay with the blue being on any of these, but we're gonna do it. Yeah, I mean, on these fox ones, do I want the blue? Let's see. That would be fine, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do the blue on the rest of these, so I'm just gonna change my thread now. Um, but one of the things that I, it was just like, it's like any business. You hear this from designers, like really big designers, right? They feel like, ooh, I almost ran out. Um, they're not, their vision kind of gets morphed over the years, right? And what they're doing gets kind of morphed. And um, maybe you're doing it because you're reacting to what customers want and what will sell and what will keep, you know, food on the table and your employee em employed, right? Um, and so a certain amount of that, I think, is, is great. But after a lot of those, um, it starts to feel like it's not really my product anymore or maybe my aesthetic has changed and that's kind of what was happening. So it just it was one of the many little things I could say. Oh, really, Sherry? I DM'd her directly. Okay, I'm gonna steal this blue thread here. Um, and one of the things was I didn't like using as much vinyl as I was using after a while, but vi sewing a vinyl bag was what people wanted and it was um, more affordable because there's less fabric. Fabric's expensive, vinyl's not. Um, but also some of my designs, because of the way we needed to be, make them affordable to produce, they were just starting to get like, I don't know, I just wasn't as into some of them, you know? And I didn't like that, that didn't sit well with me. Yeah, right? Yeah, weird and finished projects too. Yeah, you just gotta like set it aside, right? And I keep those as a reminder because sometimes I would be like, ooh, I have an idea. <laughs> and then I would sit there for, you know, a half hour or three hours working on it. And I'd be like, this is not what I wanted this to be. And it, it becomes this kooky little thing. Some of our designs, 
like the charm paper came out of that and the charm paper was a really great seller and i thought that bag was kind of cute it's actually one of the products i even used myself after a while um other things that i wasn't at like the roll top bag we did for a crate i still get asked to make that bag and that bag I was not my kind of bag. People loved it though, you know. You just never know. So, yeah, it t it's. I actually, uh, Laura said that a few times. Like, if you have one of these, it's really easy to start treating it like it's a serger, and it's not. There's a lot of things about it that kind of make you feel that way. In fact, I. It looks like I'm sewing with nothing under the needle, but I am. I'm sewing the fabric, the binding, you know? But it feels like a serger where you're not sewing something under there, but there's fabric there. And then it feels like you can just run it by itself. And here's the seam. So when you get the binding made by someone, the seams are, oh, there's two seams close together, jerks. It can be a little um, tricky to get past them. This one is not going to go well. Did you see how raggedy that thing was? <laughs> oh, it went, it went in really good. It was like the best one. But look, it, I got torquing in there. You just never know. You just never know. I feel like I'm still working on, on what people around here call fire fat. Like we all gained some weight after the big fire here, you know, out of stress. And now I feel like it's going to be the, all the home baked cookies I'm eating right now. It's going to be quarantine fat. Even though I've gained, I've lost a couple pounds. I don't know why. All I'm eating is home baked cookies. It's probably better than black licorice, though. <laughs> I love that the farmer's market is still available, you know? You can get your produce directly from the source. Less middle people, you know? I can see uh, flashes of the um, stream because I have like a sliver of it showing and I'm like, what's that? It's like a bird flew by in my peripheral vision. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, right? We're just not eating all that takeout and <laughs> processed food. <laughs> right, Sydney? Yes, exactly. You know, the other thing is like, we're all not eating it out as much. So that's another reason why grocery stores are so impacted. We're all cooking. I made two lasagnas the other day, one for the freezer. Tonight we're eating leftovers that we've never deemed a night like leftover night because we have so much home-baked food your farmers markets closed Sydney that they're essential retirement fat. don't tell me that <laughs> yep exactly exactly Sarah yeah I'm not eating as much ice cream even though we do have it I'm going to have to take out that stay stitching on a lot of these. I can see like that's the second row right here. I mean, I could cut closer, but then I cut off that first row. It's like, what's the problem I want to deal with? You know? I'm almost done. I have like 10 maybe left. I sewed, I think, uh, 25 adult today and 12 kid size. 
Yeah, and some of the farmers I, the one of the farmers that I deal with directly, the one that asked me about this, because her husband is on the, I guess the board of the Growers Association. Um, she will let you do curbside pickup too. Like you can say, oh, I want these, I want this many of this or whatever. Oh, that's smart, Laura. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like when I used to bake, I used to get so protective over it. And I wasn't a very good sharer with, like, everybody. I would be like, here, you can have peas. And then after that, I'd be like, okay, nobody's allowed to eat anymore, you know? Now I am like that. I'm like, here, have some, have some, have some. <laughs> you know? Oh, a lot of them don't open. Yeah, we have a year-round farmer's market here. Oh, that's cool. I used to get a CSA box. I love that thing. I only stopped because um, I would see their produce in the store and it was better than what I got in my CSA box. And that really made me mad. Because that's not the way a CSA is supposed to work. A CSA is supposed to work where, like, the way I was taught, and this was like, I'm not kidding, like, 25 years ago, I was taught that CSAs were to help a farm through thick, thin, thin, what was it? Through thick and thin. Good times and bad times, right? And so um, you are basically a, sh a share owner in the farm because you're supporting them, even if their crop's bad. Um, but it also means you get stuff from them when it's good. And um, I was always taught that the, the shareholders got the first pick. And this farm doesn't do it that way. But I did love the variety. It was so affordable. I mean, it really was super affordable. Far more affordable than buying it at the farmer's market or at the store Is was getting a, a CSA box. And, um, and I loved going out there and chatting with them. Really nice people. Yes, you prepay so they can plant. Exactly. And this one was year round. I live in a really rich agricultural area. I think I've mentioned that many times where um, like all, most all of your guys' almonds, walnuts, avocados are grown where I live. Olives, um, lots of stone fruit, citrus. Uh, I knew that happened, look at that. Um, yeah, so. So we have a we have a several farmers markets weekly. So there's one um, tomorrow that's n kind of near me here at my office. Well, kind of my office is only a, a mile from my house, so it's only a m another mile away. Um, and then um, there's a big one on Saturday, like downtown. But you know, downtown it's a very small downtown. There's only eighty thousand people in Chico, and that's including all the surrounding areas. Um, of well, not surrounding areas. That's including, you know, even the non-downtown area. Look at these these messier seams are going through a lot better. They're still kind of messy though. And then um, during between like Easter and Thanksgiving, somewhere around there, we have a Thursday night market, which is almost like a weekly festival. Like that's how big it is. And that's downtown. But that's our seasonal one. Okay, there's another seam. I, when I, I try and get past these seams before, might as well not make it hard on myself, right? I can always trim these ties down. Not everybody has the luxury of having all this excess binding like me. And I know that. This is this is when you just gotta use the resources that you have, you know, and this is one of my resources that I have. This is why my chicken tractors, when I raised meat chickens, had uh, Gore-Tex roofs. Because <laughs> Gore-Tex is one of the resources I had. So I didn't have to use roofing material, I used fabric. <laughs> but I did have like bright yellow and bright blue, um, you know, pins in my yard. <laughs> 
They weren't camouflage, that's for sure. All right, which one is the one I'm using? This one, right? Yeah. I can, Sherry. I walk to work on nice days. Um, I've actually been wanting to walk to work lately. It's, uh, it was kind of windy today. I should have walked today, honestly, or ride my bike. Yeah, it gets a, it gets a little hot in the summer, but I was doing it last year, even in the heat. It kind of, it kind of wrecked me a little bit. You know, like I'd be like exhausted after even a mile because it's like 105 sometimes. Don't do that. So you see, it gets a little curly. Some bindings work differently than others, um, but you can, you know, because it's biased, It'll definitely get a little stretched. So do you guys want me to sew one more? I, I kind of want to sew one more of the bag in real fabric that you guys designed. And I kind of want it to be the how-to video. Um, but I can tell like not a lot of people are watching those, the design your own bag video. So I'm not sure everyone's as into it as I think that they are. <laughs> I'm still gonna do that, but um, I'll probably only do one more stream about it. I might do some video uploads. But the beginning video I was thinking about doing is things like, like a very beginning one where it's like, when people are talking about this, this is what they mean, you know? Um, that there's different needle weights and stuff like that. Just kind of like a, let's sit down at your machine and look at it. Don't do that. I mean, I think um, making sure that um, the ends are finished of it, because some of them may get away from you. You know, like the very cut end. I might, I might just backstitch at the end. You know, like right here. I'm trying to decide. You know, I don't think I will put like a knot in this or turn and finish it, mainly because. They might cut this off, but I think I'll still at least back tack it. And even if they cut it off, I mean, they they run the risk of it coming undone. Um, but you know, these are pretty stretchy. You can see this like this amount here. Let's see. Let's this is eight inches right here, and I can stretch it an inch. So let's see. If I, if it was ten inches, I can still stretch it an inch. So this stretches ten percent. It's quite quite nice actually. Uh, that's, that's a significant amount of stretch. Dang, you made binding out of the linen viscous. You're a brave soul, Sarah. One more. Come on. Oh, right, Louise. Yeah, I think it's just good to ooh, good to um. Just like go do a little overview, you know what I mean? And I might do it as an upload rather than as a live so that it's not too long. I 
Are you um, going to get it, Sydney? It needed it. Yeah. Well, that works, Sarah, then. I mean, yeah, the things we do, right? <laughs> Oh, I know. Isn't it cute? Have you seen my stop motion video that I did with this? So you can see like the positions of the foxes, you know, they're sitting, there's leaping. There's one of them looking back. I think there's one standing. So if you go um, to my to the so so live facebook at the very top i pinned it i did a little stop motion because when we did the mountain view poll on jeans um i must have had all the time in the world <laughs> i was just like trying to figure out what to do for my pocket stitching on the back of those pockets and i just sometimes i just the mood strikes i love doing stop motion i'm not that great at them but i have a lot of fun with it it's just fun distraction and um i did one with these foxes and this fox fabric because of the positions they did and the when I had each of them cut out and on the fabric, it looks completely animated. It's so amazing. Like the way they did this, it just lent itself perfectly. And I didn't know it would until I um, played it for myself. You know, like when I take all the pictures and then I kind of slide my finger on the bottom of my photo roll to see how they're gonna look together. I was like, oh my gosh, these little foxes look like they're alive. So fun. Yeah, exactly, Louise. Yeah, so I used this as my pocket fabric on the Mountain View pull-ons, and um, I ended up stitching a fox on the back pocket. Yeah, Sydney, check it out. It's I, I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> oh, right, exactly, Sarah. Exactly. I know. That's I have that little bin of that exact same type of binding. It's like, oh, I only need eight inches, but I'm gonna make eighty. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so cute. All right. That's all of them. So now I'm going to go back and kind of look at all this stuff here. This is why you don't back stitch this and then pull out all these, right? Like that. I'll probably be methodical. I'll go through and look at all those. Look at all the stitching and see if anything's poking out. This one's not that great, but you know. They will probably throw these away once we don't need them, right? Like I said, I'm not doing shelf ready sewing here. This is, uh, she's gonna be at the farmer's market tomorrow, kind of near me, I'm gonna drop them off, so. Right, <laughs> it's so, I love that little one. I've done a bunch of them, I used to do them at Chicka Boots too. I have this one where, um, uh, it's a love story with Crookshanks. <laughs> I can't even remember. It's like Crookshanks, a love story. <laughs> I have fun with it. That's why I suggested it in my newsletter. I'm like, you know, kids are really good at this stuff. You think you might have to teach them the technology, but you really just need to like make them understand what the possibility is. Show them the hashtag of stop motion, which is really fun just to look at for fun occasionally. And then, you know, they can do it with their siblings, they can do it with their pets, they can do it with their toys, and they can make stop motion things. And it's really fun to see what's in their minds and what they do with it. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Absolutely, how are you doing? You hanging in there? All right, so I'm just looking over all those uh, basting stitches. You guys can't see it really close, but like when it gets over these thicknesses, like look at this, this is one's popping out. I might have to go back and look at a few of these. See, this is what I'm talking about. If you double stitch this and get it nice and flat, you run the risk of this happening a lot less. See? Yeah. And then, you know, when it goes over these thicknesses, the machine kind of gets like, Wah! you know, about it. <laughs> so it's not the most beautiful, but it works. Everywhere else, it looks pretty darn good. I have a 
have quite a few of these with the basting stitch showing, but you know, it's better than unpicking the binding and re-sewing it, in my opinion. And I could probably leave it, let's be honest, right? But I'm not going to. They didn't get to pick their fabrics and they're already probably feeling like, not only like some people might feel goofy wearing these, some people might feel like it's just one more reminder of the state we're living in, which just makes it more stressful. I don't know, I feel like there's a lot wrapped up in the symbol of these masks right now, you know? Can I do both sides of that? Yeah. So this is me for the next hour. I'm gonna do all the quality control for these things and then hand them off. You know the other thing I was thinking about, you guys, is liability, you know? You had to make a grocery run? Yeah, right, Terry. I know. There's certain things we just leave out for a couple days before we put away. And we, like, my husband has a whole system. He sterilizes one half of the table. And then we wipe things down and put it on the clean side of the table. And then we put it away. And, like, the things that have to be refrigerated. Our mail just sits out in the outdoor freezer. Like, not, not in it, but, like, on top of it, you know, for a couple days before he gets the mail. Just being, you know, as cautious as we can. We haven't been able to see Maggie, you know, Michael's grandma, since this happened. And her place is on, like, full, full lockdown. It was her birthday yesterday, and we bought her some candy. She's got, like, a sweet tooth the size of mine. And um, made her a card. Cricket made her a drawing. And uh, we dropped it off, but he couldn't even get go through the door. <laughs> but they at least were kind enough to say, yeah, they could give it to her, which is nice. Because, you know, she doesn't even, she doesn't, since she moved there, she doesn't have, doesn't really know how to operate the phone. Like, it's her same phone, but it's really hard for her to do that now. Like, to press the buttons and stuff, even if it is large visibility and all that. And, um, I just don't think she's really gotten that settled at her new place, you know? So we haven't seen her talk to her. Yeah, she does. She's not at all mentally challenged in any way. She is, in some ways... She's so she's sharp as a tack, and um, in some ways, I think that's a big frustration. You know, it's like she is over living this life. <laughs> you know, like she's just like, man, um, I don't like not being able to see. You know, she's a retired librarian, and she can't see anymore because of macular degeneration. And you know, reading was one of the great loves of her life. You know, so. She can be kind of a news junkie, so in a way, I'm, I'm like concerned that she's just sitting there wa watching or listening to the news, and um, they don't have any, she didn't have much social interaction already, because she was kind of new there, um, and they have them all like basically staying in their rooms, so she has n no interaction. And I know she probably just calls people just to kind of hang out, you know? So, it's hard. All right, this is probably going to get boring for you guys. <laughs> but thanks for uh, hanging out with me while I did these. I thought that would be kind of a fun treat for all of us to use the binding machine. Wow, Kathleen! How's it going? Kitch Couture is my friend IRL, and I just turned her on to Big Bang Theory, so she's down that rabbit hole, lucky duck. Um, Louise, you know, she couldn't operate the thing to, to do the audiobook, so that's kind of a, um, because I thought of the same thing. She really likes classical music. So there is a music station on her um, TV, but she doesn't change it. So Kathleen, you're not really seeing my usual sewing setup or my usual sewing. You missed all the um, drool-worthy binding attachment fun. I could fire it up for you if you want. It's really easy. 
I'm still sitting here, right? Still fired up. I'm just doing a little bit of quality control on these before I sign off. Just getting this basting stitch. This one's kind of caught on itself. What are you sewing, Kathleen? What are you doing today? Okay. That one is I need to go do more work on. I got a nice big pile, you guys. Oh, it's nice to see you. I'm not seam ripping. I, what I did um, was I pre-stitched this edge here, Terry, where um, these pleats are so that I could try and keep this edge as straight as possible with the stitching um, and the folds of these pleats perpendicular to the raw edge there. That way if I had two rows, it made it go through the binding machine a little bit smoother. And the, you know, because of the thickness and the, and the width there, the thickness of the fabric this way and the width, um, I knew, you know, cause look at the stitching is like not right up on the edge there, right? It's a little further away because of the thickness right now. So it's not allowing it to cover up the basting stitch, so. <laughs> right Louise I know I know but I just think that's just too much she doesn't even have a yeah she doesn't even have Wi-Fi oh you know there's a few what do you guys think can she where she would she find a pattern with the filter pocket do you have the filters that go inside Kathleen that one I'll leave but see, I don't like that right there. You see, there's my little tail. So I'll at least get this away. I'm using my awl, which is a lot easier. Because the seam ripper might cut the thread, and I don't really want it to cut it. I just want to pull it out as one thing. These are all for the farmer's market, folks. I love random questions, Sydney. How often will I change my needle? Um, I change it far more than you want to know. <laughs> Supposedly two hours of sewing is about all your needles should take, right? I know we all go more than that. And I'm not talking about this is counting as time towards those hours, me just sitting here not even using the machine. I'm talking about two hours of your, your needle in action, you know? But you can go more depending on what you're doing. If you're um, sewing things like vinyl, uh, I would change it a little more often. Uh, if you're sewing big thick things like the, the project bag, I would change it more often. Um, and you know what I would do also, Sydney, is kind of get a feel for it. I, I always, I don't know if you guys see, but I always run my finger along my needle right before I change it. And I think that that's a great way to start noticing. You'll feel it and you'll be like, oh yeah, I need to change my needle. Um, you can feel it. So, yeah. I like random questions interactive that's what you're here for this is exactly why I do this random questions <laughs> yeah I know you can Kathleen but what are you gonna use are you gonna use like a vacuum cleaner bag because I have a bagless vacuum cleaner nice Laura I know all of our houses are getting like the deep clean I'm trying to rearrange everything right now and it's got me a little bit like I'm over it you know um, I might have a funny video to show you guys on Instagram if you're on Instagram. So I, after years, I undid my Harry Potter cupboard <laughs> with all my Harry Potter stuff in it um, that people have given me over the years. Look at this one right here. Womp womp. Um, and um, I did a little video before I pulled everything out of there just so you guys can see a bit of comic relief. I'll post it someday soon. <laughs> I've never really shown my Harry Potter cupboard because it's kind of embarrassing. People have given me a lot of amazing stuff uh, and it was quite elaborate and I, I didn't even like decorate it or anything. I mean, I decorated with the stuff, but that was about it. And it is really fun. If you're a fan, you're gonna really love seeing all the stuff there is out there. Um, my favorite things are like fan made things, you know, so. <laughs> You'll feel a barb in your needle. It'll feel a little or feel scratchy. 
Um, feel a good needle. You, you, and, and I'm not saying that your needle only needs to be changed if, it, if you can feel it on there. No, your needle needs to be changed sometimes even if you can't feel anything. If you just went through a really thick seam and it didn't go so well, but you got through it, you might want to change your needle because you could have inadvertently slightly bent your needle and you can't tell looking at it. It could be bent, you know, like this to you and you won't see it. That kind of stuff, you guys, is really important. You need to change the needle. Anytime your needle is in your machine and going below the surface, um, it there's all these moving mechanisms, right? And there's like this hook and this looper. That's not a looper, but it's a hook coming around to grab the thread, you know, and do the pass where your bobbin thread and your top thread now are making that lock stitch, right? That's the difference between your, your uh, single needle machine and your serger, right? So you have these moving parts there. If your needle is bent, you can throw off the timing of your machine. And if you throw off the timing on, on your machine, you can't fix that unless you have a mechanic in your life. It's not like fixing the tension. So the timing of your machine is really, really important. And it's probably really what happens to most machines when they need to go to the shop is just the timing needs to be adjusted. And that's just a regular thing you need to have done. But if you can do things to prevent that from happening, like well, um, getting rid of any lint that builds up in there because the pressure of that lint pushing on things can adjust things. If you just move some of those little items just a tiny bit, you know, if the pressure of something's pushing up against a, like a little spring, like there's a spring in the bottom of your bobbin case, um, and then that gets misaligned, and then your needle's kind of going, you know, around that or bumping up against it. Then you're getting a barb on your needle. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of moving parts under there. So that's my little lecture today. Hi, Jackie. Yeah, I know, right, Jackie? I added some uh, some um, interfacing to these. Yeah, that's great, Sydney. Yeah, the elastic is a good reason to change your needle. So, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, for me, Louise, um, that was always what my mechanic would be working on because I did heavy-duty sewing. I think, too, that we aren't talked to like we might understand what they're talking about when we go to take our machine in. Am I right? Um, and sometimes the person you're dealing with at the counter doesn't actually do the machine work. And so they may not know either. There's a, you know, lots of good reasons. Um, and, and timing isn't the only reason to hand, to do all that. You know, there's a lot of things you guys, like I tell you, I'm not an expert mechanic. I'm just an expert using my machine, <laughs> you know? So you got to like look at all that stuff, you know? Yeah, I'm kind of liking the feel of these, Jackie, with the interfacing. It, it kind of adds a nice stiffener, and then I feel like they won't they won't get too crumply over time, and it's still breathable. There's flipping masks everywhere over here. This one needs a little more help. A lot of these early ones, uh, I didn't have the the stitching poking out. This one is, but that one kind of blends in really well. Look at these little kid ones. They would work. I uh, don't oil my machine, but it, that's only because my machine doesn't get oiled, um, Jackie. It sits in a pan of oil. So here, I'll even show you guys a little bit. So I, I have to actually brace myself. So if I push my machine head, you see this? So down there, there's this pan that's sitting underneath my machine, and it's filled with oil. If you look at Soda Fit's post on Instagram, she has a picture of it right now because she just changed her oil. I don't typically change mine. Oh, I saw that reply, Sydney, if that's what you're talking about. I don't typically change mine ever. If it gets really gummed up with lint or if you, if you saw like a production machine in a factory, those could probably stand to be changed. It's a pain in the butt. You have to find a place for the oil. You have to drain it out of a screw under the bot underneath. And the screw for mine on that new machine, I could not get that sucker undone. It's like this, it's a screw like this big in height, like this. 
and um, but the diameter of it is like a nickel and it has the slot in it and because of the oil and the depth so that that whole screw including the cap of the screw and the threads that's it so to have enough room to put your um, you know your screwdriver in the groove of the screw it was too tight and I couldn't get it in between that and the oil oh my gosh I almost had a fit I was getting so frustrated <laughs> So I had to move that machine with the oil in it. I couldn't get it out. This one I need to fix. So Kathleen, are you still here? Are you, how are you liking Big Bang Theory? How many, what did you, what, they got the whole set, you guys. They, they treated themselves. They got it on eBay. So um, I'm telling Kathleen's business here. Sorry, Kathleen. You're like new here and now you're never going to come back because I'm scarring you. See, aren't you guys all glad you're not my friend in real life? So I don't out your your hobbies. I don't usually. They'll tell you, Kathleen. Okay. But you should oil your machine um, pretty regularly, I, Jackie. I mean, like, I would look at your um, owner's manual, and if you don't have it, try and find it on the internet and download it. It's really easy to oil a machine. You're still here, okay. It's really easy to oil your machine and um, you'll notice a big improvement usually. You're in season two, episode 11, all right. You know, it's like when I meet someone that's never read Harry Potter or watched the movies and then they go to do it. <sighs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> they get to experience it for the first time. That's how I feel about Kathleen watching Big Bang Theory. I just love that show so much. It's such a great comic relief right now. She told me she wasn't very nerdy and I was like, dude, you're nerdy. And then she watched a few and she was like, yeah, you're right. I'm nerdier than I thought. <laughs> now you know what AFK means, <laughs> exactly. Bye Jackie, nice seeing you. run to a meeting, meaning you have to sit there and log in and deal with all the tech crap, right? <laughs> I saw that, did you guys see that someone's, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's not like a viral thing, but I saw this gal post a picture. She said, my boss accident, or my boss turned herself into a potato with a filter in our video chat. So then there's this, there's, she took a picture with her phone. And so it has all the pictures of people in the meeting. And her boss was literally a russet potato with eyeballs and a no, uh, eyeballs and a mouth. And it was like some sort of Snapchat filter in Microsoft meetings or something like that. I don't know what that meeting thing is called because I don't use it. But um, she couldn't figure out how to turn it off. So she had to do use it for the whole meeting. <laughs> I told my husband, I'm like, you got to do this. He doesn't have Snapchat, though. Neither do I. Okay. Are you guys bored yet? Me doing this? I thought I would blog off by now. You're guys, you guys are nice company. Sometimes I just love my all for this kind of stuff, you know? Does this binding attachment look faster now that I'm doing this? <laughs> I didn't know if I would stream this week either. So it's nice when she asked me for this. I was like, I will stream that. I thought this was my usual day and time too. I'm so turned around. It's not. Yeah, it was pretty funny, Sydney. And the, I think the filter, it put like this eyes and this like they looked really they look like a kid had drawn them on but they were kind of faint and I think they moved when she talked <laughs> I don't know it wasn't a video but it was really funny the gal was like and I didn't get fired you know for posting this <laughs> but that is pretty funny all right this one needs a little TSC it's almost there
This one just needs help in general. Okay, I have a few on the floor. Yeah, when I put my oil in the machine yesterday, I uh, couldn't tip it back very far because when you have the electronics attached to these machines, it hinders that um, tilt motion. Um, and it's also, um, the belt is on the hand wheel like in all machines and um, that tightens it as well. And, and like on my old school, very old school um, industrial, I could just tilt my machine and then unloop the belt off of the hand wheel and then I could tilt it all the way back and just rest it on the back there. And my mechanic does that because he knows what to disconnect. But when I was pouring in the oil, a little bit caught on the edge right here and I was just like, I wanted to make that face, you know? And um, I then I was like, all right, that wasn't so bad. I can clean that up. And then I noticed it was on the floor and I was like, Okay, yeah, now I need to, need to make that face. You're not bored. <laughs> yeah, well, you have a friend that has that binding attachment, Kathleen. Someday we will see each other again. You can come over and just play with it. It's really fun. <laughs> Ooh, Sydney, that's cool. Ah, thanks, Laura. Thank you guys for your company. All right. Yeah, what else can I bind, you guys? All right, these, this one doesn't need it. That one doesn't need it. Okay, here's my pile. So then I'll take these over to my regular machine and I'll check all those spots where the binding could be better and kind of uh, back it up and restitch it. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Would you like a little tour of the binding machine, Kathleen? I'll show you. I, you probably saw my Instagram video though. But it is super fun. But this I this will also be a good demonstration of why this doesn't work for a quilt. So like say this was the quilt, this whole piece of fabric right here. You have to go on in the middle of the quilt, right? Like this. Right? And so um, if you are, you know, able to turn a corner, you know, because you're really good at your binding machine. There's a thickness there. So you can't really have a squared corner, right? So now you have that to deal with. And then when you wanted to get back to the beginning, like say we went all the way, the way around our quilt, we went all the way around and we came here we are, Come, approach, approaching the beginning of our bind, our quilt, or this is where we started. This is what you have to deal with, right? So you have to figure out how to do that. So you could trim this off as close as possible and try and bind over that. It won't go very well. And so what I learned was when I do all my little pet quilts, um, I don't, I use the binding machine for them because it's fast, it's easy, and they're for my pets, right? And so when I get up to here, what I would do, so if you got one of these and you want to know how to get around it, then I cut it and I leave myself a tail like this. And then I deal with this tail how I would normally deal with binding. And you can see, look at my binding machine kind of draws it up. There's no thickness in here, it's just two layers of, of fabric. So it will draw it up because the bias because it's getting a little stretched as it puts gets put on then when it relaxes it draws up your fabric like what you're seeing right here you know so yeah so then um what i would do is then i would one of two ways i would either back this up right here and get that much flusher with the edge right here sorry we're not using our usual camera setup you guys where you could see overhead um and then i would you know turn this under, go wrap it around like that, and then finish that edge right there. And then your quilt would be finished. But you have to remember your quilt's thicker than this. So it is a, it's a little tricky. And what I would advise is do what I did with the masks. And I would do, um, I would stitch around the edge two extremely parallel, narrow rows 
around the perimeter to kind of flatten it up. And that will help um, make it go through the binding machine a little easier. I used to have a friend um, who would bind her really nice quilts on my binding machine because she was like, I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> and and I would do it for her, and then I would say, all right, you're going to have to, and I would just put a pin everywhere she needed to touch it up, and she was fine with that, you know? So, oh, cool, Terry. I want to see your, I want to see your binding machine in action, Terry. Will you post a little video on Facebook if you can, or Instagram or something? Only if it's easy. It's, it's okay if not, or just, I just want to see how yours goes. Because that's your home machine, right? That's pretty cool. Yeah, so this one is really great on like, obviously like a straight edge like this. One layer of fabric, two layer of fabric, but you can have a lot of fun with it. If you wanted to really draw up the fabric, you could just let the binding do what it wants to do, right? I'm gonna keep this really relaxed as it goes through there. And it almost creates a gathered edge. Now, you guys, you guys, if I was a big um, company and I had like, you know, all the money to deal with my machines and my mechanic, I had a mechanic and all that, I wouldn't stand for this. I would have them make it so that it didn't do this. My mechanic could never get this to not do it. And it's actually doing it worse than it ever has. But we just used it to our advantage instead. To an old Kenmore. Yeah. I love those old Kenmores. Those were the machines I used to hand out to friends who wanted to sew. So we would just use it. And so now if I were to do this and pull this edge, this is what that would be normally what I would do. I would pull this fabric as it goes through carefully. Okay. So I would pull it really hard. Then I would get it flatter. You see the difference there? So see, if I let it do its thing and then if I pull on it. And so this is exactly how I was telling you why I sewed myself. So, <laughs> because I was pulling it and I just went whoop. So, so yeah, I mean, this attachment's really amazing. Um, I really love it, $35. I, You know, people treated me like I was a genius for this and I was just like, no, 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 I'm not. Someone else was. <laughs> just bought it so um you do need like the a different um i can maybe maybe i can zoom in there i'll just zoom in i won't i won't pivot that you can see the throat plate is um split a little and so is the oof i don't know if you're gonna be able to see i, I get some kind of quality loss you can't really see, but right there, this is open underneath here. You see that? So it's a totally different throat plate. And see, I only have one half of my presser foot. There's also this little thing right here. And this pushes the needle closer to the edge or further away from the edge of the binding. So I can get it really close to the edge if I want. It comes at a price, though. So you just gotta do what works best for like what you're sewing on. But if you're a small company and you're wanting to kind of start doing some things that are as close to automating as you can, and this would help you, just try it out. You know, uh, don't be afraid of it. Um, chip away at it. You know, that's my thing is like, I bought the machine with the attachment. It sat in my shop which costs you money, right? It's just sitting there not doing anything. But I was also dealing with training a new employee and getting into a whole new rhythm with someone else um, in my shop and um, seeing what she was capable of, what she liked doing, uh, what we were the fastest at, what I needed to keep, right? And then I think, I, I'm sure it was partly due to her enthusiasm, like we should get that going. That really helped me go, yeah, you're right. We gotta get this going. And then I kind of started splur not splurging, but it felt like a splurge at the time um, on getting a mechanic from Sacramento to come visit me regularly. And my first one, he he got it going right off the bat. He was like, yeah, no problem. That's what he does, you know? So 
Uh, and then I just started learning that I needed to kind of one thing leads to another. So don't, don't, don't be afraid of what you may end up having to do. Don't worry about that. I'm just here giving you a little pep talk about this because if I had known I was going to have to start having my binding cut by someone for sure, I would have been more scared and I probably wouldn't have gotten it just because it's like, oh, one more thing I have to figure out. Like that is like the bane of every entrepreneur. One more thing I have to figure out. One more thing I have to become an expert in. One more thing I have to research. When am I gonna research that? When am I gonna do that homework? When am I gonna try that out? When am I gonna have time to troubleshoot that? That's always kind of what you're dealing with. But eventually you get interested in it or you need it really bad or everything else comes to a grinding halt because you need it. <laughs> so just um, baby steps, get yourself there. You might be able to get the hand cut binding to work for you longer than I could. I couldn't. Um, it wasn't until I used the pre-cut binding that we sent out, you know, on these rolls, um, cause that's when it got really, you know, accurate for us. And then I also, once I started using my binding catchment with all the time, I got better and better at it and I can use the hand cut. So yeah. And it's such a simple little thing. So, um, and there's other attachments out there. So don't stop here. If you have a, if you need pleating done, there are pleating attachments. If you need gathering, gathering attachments, hemming, um, blind hemming, um, pico edging, there's attachments for everything. And if you want to design attachments, you can have someone make it for you. Tennessee attachment will make things for you. So the world is your oyster. It's just kind of hard to open that damn oyster sometimes, you know, so. All right, well, um, let's see. It's already one o'clock. Um, I've already been streaming a couple hours, so. Jelly rolls and steroids. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's funny what ends up becoming your resource, right? Like what you have lying around. And this is what I have lying around. So if you want any blue with plus signs. Ah, see? Terry got a bigger binding. Yeah, that's the other thing I should stress. You don't have to get a binding attachment in this width. You can get a binding attachment that um, does it differently too. Single fold, double fold, wider, um, narrower, um, cross cut. The sample came with it cross cut and I was like, no. <laughs> and then it totally worked with bias. So yeah. Ooh, Terry. I love your adventure nature. I love that you're always going for it. It's inspiring to me. <laughs> um, I just uh, I just like to encourage people, like, all this stuff's available. You just got to know where to look and how to find it. And Google's really great. At least we have Google now, right? We didn't always have that. Um, and just, you know, look around. There's There are a few companies that post videos on doing stuff like this but they're usually geared towards a different industry than I was in like the sail making like like boats um there's a lot of uh videos devoted to them because I think those folks at that company really love making videos and that's what helps right so anyway um and this is an old machine like I said you can get one of these like I my other one without the electronics I'm probably gonna I'm gonna give it away but if I were to sell it I'd sell it for three hundred dollars like that's and it's this identical machine, no electronics. So you can get these machines very affordable. Industrial machines are very, very affordable. So that is my little pitch to you guys. They're just a pain in the ass to move. That's all. Yeah, exactly, Terry. Yeah, and I like reading the comments. Sometimes the comments will clue you in on where you can get something like that. So, and then ask a machine mechanic where they would get it. Talk to the mechanic too. Don't talk to anyone else. <laughs> All right. Well, that was my little pitch. I make no money t t selling you binding attachments, but there you go. <laughs> um, all right, well, thanks for hanging out with me while I finish all these masks up. I'm gonna go um, switch over to my other setup. Let me just look at it and see what it looks like. Otherwise, I'd bring you with me, but I'm pretty sure my other machine... Oh, see, so yeah, I can actually go over there, but I'm probably gonna eat lunch, so I'll do this. I'm on my other side of my shop right now, so this is usually where the iron is. I put the iron on the other side. <laughs> All right, well, I will see you guys. I don't know when I'll see you, but maybe 
Saturday. I'll sew um, a final version of the bag. Ah, I love seeing you guys too. I know I was a little like, you're never going to see me again. But um, it's nice. It's nice to see you guys. Kathleen is, thank you. I'm glad you stopped by. I know it's really weird, huh? <laughs> it's weird to me too. <laughs> but it's it's fun. Um, I'll, I'll definitely stream again this week. And I might just do some um, things that I need to sew. And we'll just hang out and sew. If that sounds good to you guys, I'll probably make my um, pajama top. I have the tamarack vest and um, the insides of the dog beds. So, and then, but I'm also going to work on the pattern for every, the bag you guys designed. So, all right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Let me do the project thumbnail. Bye.